Welcome to Inspiring People, the show about inspiring people, those who are inspired and those who inspire others. We all know them. They're good examples, they're supportive, they embrace life, they live inspiring lives in their day-to-day -day actions, and in turn, inspire others to do the same. Lakers out of the huddle. Rory Menke running the veer for the Lakers. Thank you, Andy Leah, for agreeing to be the first guest on Inspiring People. Because the show is being filmed not only for entertainment value, but also for historical reference, let's begin by having you tell the viewers your full name. My name is Andrew John Leah, better known as Andy Leah. Okay. Where are you from? Well, I uh, was born in Detroit Lakes, and I graduated from Detroit Lakes High School in 1959, and uh, been various other places, and finally back here in Detroit Lakes. And what is your current profession? I'm currently operations manager at KDLM Radio, and uh, also I do the sports, I'm the sports director there too, so. Okay, well thanks again for being here. Um, Andy, why don't we begin by having you tell the viewers something about your family. Well, I was born in Detroit Lakes. Uh, my father was Ivor Lee and my mother Lucille. My father's passed on. My mother's still alive yet. I uh, grew up here in Detroit Lakes uh, and went to Detroit Lakes High School. Worked for my dad at his implement shop while I went to high school and after that went on to radio school where that's what I've been doing ever since. As a child, what did you want to be when you grew up? Well, like a lot of little boys, I wanted to be a Major League Baseball player, which <laughs> I never made, but uh, I think I wanted to be a baseball player first, and uh, later on I thought, well, maybe I want to be a highway patrolman. <clears throat> but I found out I was too small to be a highway patrolman at that time. So then I listened to KDLM radio at that time, and I took a little interest in radio, and that's where I ended up. Okay, great. And what did you do for fun in good old Detroit Lake? Ew, we scooped the loop. <laughs> uh, that was uh, <laughs> our pastime where we'd uh, hop in the car, we'd go up and down Washington Avenue, turn around, come back, and <laughs> do it all over again. Mm -hmm. And that was what, just reserved for the weekends, or was that something uh, you did during the middle of the week, too? Middle of the week, the loop too, yep. Uh, mm -hmm. if, uh, if we were uh, not into athletics at that time, and then we <laughs> scooped the loop summertime or on weekends or in the evening just to see where our friends were. Mm -hmm. so. Pretty neat. Well, I think probably kids today do a, some version of scooping the loop, do, yeah. don't they? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Andy, you have an esteemed radio career here in the area. Uh, how did you get into what you're currently doing? Well, after graduation, I went to the University of Minnesota Duluth for a quarter and decided that uh, that wasn't my forte and so then I dropped out and uh, went to radio school Brown Institute in Minneapolis and I worked during the day at John Deere Company went to school at night and after one year graduated and uh, then moved on to my first job. And where was that first job? I was at KTRF in Thief River Falls and I was there for about two years and uh, then the long trip uh, for to many different places I uh, worked at uh, Park Rapids, Bismarck, North Dakota. Came back and uh, worked at Thief River Falls again. I worked at uh, Brainerd at KLIZ. Brief stint at Owatonna and uh, at KDLM with a couple of stops in between at Bemidji and Minneapolis. And I've been back here since 1980. Oh, that's really <coughs> interesting. And I suppose you got to know each of those communities a little bit. Did you always do the sports? Casting in those uh, stations? Not in all of them. Uh, Thief River Falls I did, uh, Brainerd, uh, and then here in Detroit Lakes. Okay. Uh, what do you think, um, or wh what individual has influenced uh, the choices you've made in your life? And, and maybe you could talk that about, if it is an individual, who had the most positive influence on your life? Well, I think you have to go back to Mom and Dad. Uh, they were the first ones to uh, guide you, and uh, my dad was... A workaholic, but uh, a great fellow. Everybody loved him, and he was in the implement business here for many years. And of course, my mother was the guiding light, and I was the only boy among uh, the family of four girls. Uh, so, and then uh, from there, uh, uh, Ted Anderson, uh, who was one of my teachers in high school, was my fire teacher, my baseball coach. I always did look up to Ted. And at that time, I was kind of a little short runt, and uh, Ted always gave me credit, uh, promoted me to do things in athletics and other things. And so I always uh, thank Ted for his help. And then I, probably my first radio station manager, Don Olson at KTRF, 
gave me my first opportunity and showed me the radio business to start with. Okay, and do you think that these individuals then, they've contributed in some way to the person you are today, and in what ways do you still feel their influence? Well, my dad, uh, definitely for hard work. Uh, uh, I'm not afraid of hard work. Uh, Don Olson for teaching me the radio business and how to go about meeting people and uh, the sports angle out of it and uh, of course my mom who's still around she still guides me uh, mm -hmm. into the right path. <laughs> and, and how about Ted? How do you see his Ted his I see him quite often and uh, uh, talk to him uh, every once in a while and uh, he's just a positive person. He was football coach, baseball coach and uh, if I had teacher and I think everybody probably has a teacher, their favorite mm -hmm. teacher, that kind of guided them along. So mm -hmm. Ted was one of those. And we're fortunate that Ted is still living in the community with his wife, Eleanor, and maybe he'd yep. be a good <clears throat> guest to have on Inspiring People as well, wouldn't I he? Think, I think he would. Pretty yeah, modest yeah. guy, but I think he might enjoy being here. Well, um, as we all know, sometimes negative experiences also contribute to the kind of person we become. So do you want to share with us what are some of the obstacles or more stressful experiences you've had to live through in your life? Well, I think probably when you ask me that question, uh, one of the first things that uh, comes to mind is uh, I was on the air and when John F. Kennedy was shot, uh, that was very tough to do to stay mm -hmm. on the air for the length of time that we did. We broadcast around the clock. Uh, of course, 9-11, it just happens that I was on the air that morning that uh, the planes flew into the World Trade Center. And I think one other stressful moment, but it was a very enjoyable moment, was my first state high school championship football game, broadcasting it from uh, the Metrodome. Uh, I was probably the most nervous person around, except <laughs> for maybe Mr. Mankey, but uh, uh, it was a great experience, and uh, we've been there three or four more times since then. So Right, and many of us <laughs> know and remember yeah. the broadcasts that you right. did from there. They're exceptional. Um, for some of these experiences, um, who or what helped you get through the, the stressful times in your life or the, the times when you've had to endure negative experiences? Oh, I think uh, the, the managers I worked for, I worked for a lot of great radio station managers, and... Uh, They've guided my career and helped me along, and uh, of course, uh, my wife uh, definitely is uh, a backbone for me, too. She helps me through the tough times, too. So. That's right, and we might even put in a little plug for Sandy. Sandy works at a care facility right. here in, in the community and does a, is an inspiring person in her own right, right. as well, and the other half of... Oli and Lena, right? right. So there's that. Ah, sure you betcha. <laughs> so I want to get a plug in for Oli and Lena too, right? <laughs> so Andy, have you had a defining moment in your life, uh, like that people now call them aha moments, where um, it's just all of a sudden, they, sudden something grabs a hold of you and says, this is a really important moment in my life? Oh, I, I think when uh, Bob Hooper called me up one day and uh, said, Andy, uh, I submitted your name to the Minnesota High School Football Coaches Association to their, uh, their all-star team. And uh, so I was named to the Minnesota Football Coaches Hall of Fame. And I had to go down and make a speech there and meet all these people. And that was just a fantastic moment for me. And one that will stay with you forever, you know, like I say, no defining a defining moment. <laughs> Well, one of the questions that I wanted to ask you um, also was, um, how would you like history to record your life? Uh, what do you want your legacy to be? Ooh, that's, that's tough to think what your legacy is going to be, but you're getting up to that age where you start <laughs> thinking about that. I just, uh, I think back to all the, the years that I've worked at the radio station. I've never missed a day of work. I've uh, been the morning voice of Detroit Likes, waking people up. The people say, hey, I wake up to you every morning, I think that and plus being the voice of Detroit Lakes Laker Athletics for all these years are something that uh, I've enjoyed and probably will be my legacy. Okay and one last question if you could have dinner with any two people from history who would they be and why would you choose them? Well being a baseball nut the say hey kid Willie Mays I want to have lunch mm -hmm. with him and John F. Kennedy, John two, of F. My, Kennedy. two of my heroes. Great. Thank you, Andy, for sharing and for being an inspiring person. Um, thank you all for watching Inspiring People, the show about those who are inspired and those who inspire others. Thank you. If you have an idea for a guest on this program, please send it to Inspiring People. 
Box 1408, Detroit Lakes, Minnesota 56502. All Inspiring People interviews will be archived in the Becker County Museum. They may or may not be available for public use. 